Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. So, as you know, Monday means it's Modern Monday here in Instant Deck Tech land, and we have a super spicy list to check out today. This one is combining a few of my favorite things, land destruction, prison strategies and a really unique I win the game finisher and this one comes from Tori Yuto who took it to a top 8 finish at a tournament over in Japan so congrats to Tori on their finish with the deck a quick reminder before we break down reactor land death lock if you enjoy this deck and you want to see it made into videos take a minute click the like button the subscribe button leave a comment anything you can do to support your deck because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So the deck, to kind of understand it, we gotta break through what it's doing as the game goes along, and it starts with a massive 10 copies of Birds of Paradise, essentially. It's got four birds, four noble hierarchs, and two Avacyn's Pilgrim, and this is a lot for a modern deck. Most of the time, you'll see no more than like seven-ish, maybe eight if you really want the effect, but 10 is a massive number of one mana accelerants, and that tells us that the deck really really wants to make sure it's getting to three mana on turn two, essentially every single game. So what's so important about these cards and getting to three mana? Well, of course, the Birds of Paradise cards ramp us into our bigger plays, and then they can ramp us into our three drops, Stone Rain and Molten Rain, so these are kind of reverse Birds of Paradise. While the Birds and High Arcs and Avacyn's Pilgrims ramp us and accelerate our game plan, Stone Rain and Molten Rain do the opposite to our opponent. They're essentially taking away one of their resources and setting them back by a turn. So while we're accelerating into four drops and five drops really quickly, our opponent is going to be kind of stumbling on their mana, having a hard time executing their game plan because we're destroying their lands. So turn one, Birds of Paradise effect, turn two, hopefully Stone Rain, and then we start throwing down lock pieces. And one thing about this deck is it is not going to lose to creatures. It has more disruptive cards for creatures than I've seen in probably any deck. Four ensnaring bridge, so you get empty-handed, creatures can't attack. Four ghostly prisons, creatures have to pay two to attack you. And then four sphere of safeties. So with these cards, you just basically slam them down and it's very likely you will lock creatures out of the game altogether. The combination of these cards is gonna be really hard for most decks to beat. So if your opponent's plan is to win with creatures, they're gonna have a really hard time doing it. Of course, in modern, some decks are winning with spells, but we got a plan here too. Layla Line of Sanctity just gives us Hexproof, which means our opponent can't Lightning Bolt our face or Conflagrate us or Lava Storm us. All that spell-based combo, Grape Shot out of Storm, shuts down all that stuff. So it's kind of the Sphere of Safety, but for spell-based decks. And Blood Moon just makes it really hard for opponents to cast their stuff. This is primarily for spell-based decks, like Scape Shift, which would be a problem, like Tron, which could be a problem. But it's fine against creature decks as well. But creature decks, like I said, aren't really too much of a concern because we have so many ensnaring bridges and sphere of safeties and whatnot. So, Birds of Paradise into Stone Rains, into Infinite Lock Pieces, but how do we actually close out the game? Well, we got two options. Option one is Assemble the Legion, which five mana, and each turn it makes a 1-1 one, one red and white soldier with haste, and then you get a counter on it each turn, so you make one more each turn. So the first turn you'll make one, then two, then three. It's kind of like a positive reverse cumulative upkeep, where every turn you're getting progressively more and more soldiers soldiers, so eventually you will just overwhelm your opponent. After like 5 turns you're getting 5, after 10 turns you're getting 10. Sooner or later, if your opponent can't kill the Assemble the Legion, they're just gonna scumble to your tokens. But, there's always a chance that your opponent can deal with the Assemble the Legion. Enchantment removal is a thing, but we have a finisher that guarantees no matter what removal our opponent's playing, but most of the removal our opponents playing, we're gonna get the win, and that is Dark Steel Reactor. And this card is kinda crazy. So, four mana, you get an indestructible 
artifact, and on each of your upkeeps, you get a counter. Once it gets 20 counters, you win the game. So that's kind of the actual plan of the deck, and all of these lock pieces make sense. If we can just completely lock our opponent out of the game in every way possible, all we really got to do is play a Dark Steel Reactor and sit back and wait for 20 turns Why the counters get added, and we win the game with our Dark Steel Reactor counters. So it's a pretty interesting plan, and there's not much in Modern that kills Dark Steel Reactor. Since it's indestructible, Maelstrom Pulse doesn't get it, Artifact Removal like Ancient Grudge doesn't get it, your opponent really needs like a weird fringe card that doesn't normally see play. Exiling an enchantment is an effect you really see on things, so I think there's a pretty good chance that if you can lock everything out of the game, Dark Steel Reactor is going to get the victory. As far as the mana base, pretty straightforward. A handful of fetches, a couple of shock lands, and then a bunch of basic lands. No mountains, of course, but this lets us play our Blood Moon so we can fetch out our forests and plains. We can still play our stuff, even through a Blood Moon, while our opponent probably can't. As far as the side Board, we get even more lock pieces so worship makes it really hard for us to lose if we can stick a creature unfortunately in the main deck we don't have creatures that are good at sticking around just all the one mana things that die to everything so for bringing in worship we also get to bring in Sigarda host of Furins, which is maybe the hardest creature to kill outside of a monstrous fleece main lion in all of magic it can't be targeted it can't be got by sacrifice effects like Liliana the Veil, so pretty much the only way it goes off the battlefield is a legitimate Wrath effect, and not too many decks are playing actual Wrath in Modern. So this is our plan if our opponent doesn't care about our creature-based stuff. If our opponent is playing all spells, we gotta take out Ensnaring Bridges and Ghostly Prisons and all that kind of stuff, so we have a ton of cards to go out in creature-based matchups, so we bring in Worship, we bring in Sigarda, we bring in Nevermore in those matchups as well, so we can name our opponent opponent's big finisher, a Gifts Ungiven, a Past in Flames against Storm, a Conflagrate against Dredge, etc, 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 and then Defense Grid makes sure we get to resolve our stuff through counters. It basically reads, counter spells cost an additional three to cast. Technically, it gets all spells that are cast on your opponent's turn, so it taxes everything that's played at instant speed, but the reason this card shows up in sideboards is to make counters less of a problem. Your opponent can't just dispel or negate your stuff they got to spend four or five or in the case of cryptic command seven mana to resolve their counter spell which makes sure that we're sticking our ensnaring bridges sticking our dark steel reactor all that kind of stuff in winning the game and that is reactor land death lock for modern and that's better instant deck deck for today so thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and i will talk to you soon thanks for watching the video if you enjoyed it help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.